Hello guys, I'm Manuel. So today I'm going to show you my workflow in DaVinci Resolve in ACES. Uh, the reason why is because some people ask me about my color correction process and why I switched to ACES and these kind of things. And um, yeah, so before I'm not a colorist, professional colorist, just a filmmaker with a lot of passion uh, in color grading, in color stuff, design, this kind of things. So I just studied by myself and yeah, so probably there are a lot of errors looks from prof pro professional perspective. But yeah, this is my, my workflow. Okay, so uh, let's jump into it. Basically, we have two clips today. We have uh, one from Blackmagic Pocket 4K, a RAW file and another one from Panasonic S1. So we are going to do to see these two different type of files and these two, two different cameras, how it works here. So first of all, um, this is quite easy to do. A color management option in DaVinci Resolve. What I'm usually doing is ACES CCCT uh, V1.1 no input transform because actually resolve is quite smart to recognize the clips but if you want you can just assign here on a timeline or individually for each clip so i just leave this uh, without input transform uh, auto devices i usually use srgbs because it's now i'm not uh, i'm publishing some videos on youtube or on web so I'm, I'm using this color space and AP1 timeline space. I'm, I'm not going in deep and describe every, this kind of options. You can easily check on ACES Central uh, online. So basically you can just study and see what does it mean, CCT or CC, this kind of thing. So today I'm just going to show you my, my process and let's see how it works. Okay, so basically this is my setup. And then uh, what's going on here? Let, let's create um, let's create another 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 version so we can actually reset all node growth. Okay, so we can actually see what's going on here. So basically this clip is from Blackmagic 4K Pocket and we just we just applied our output device transform here. So what's going on here? So as you can see, this is my, my scopes. We have to, to do some, some fixes here. So I have three nodes here. The first one, which I usually do, it's put a CLF a lot neon suppression. I'm not going to explain why, but you can look around and study these kind of things. Basically, I will show you later what, what, how it works on the colors and the shadows. And the second one, so the second one is basically, I will just adjust the contrast, right? So I'm just pushing down my gamma a bit Maybe too much. Find the sweet spot here, but yeah, it's just good to go, I think. Okay. Uh, yeah, it's it's okay. We can refine later. So this is basically <clears throat> um, contrast, right? Second one, so color suppression here. Contrast color, contrast curve, sorry. And the third one, I usually check the skin tones. I'm not doing, I will not show you advanced color grading stuff. It is just basic flow. Of course, on top of this, you can add qualifications, real lighting, all these kind of things, uh, hard grades, whatever. So I usually check the skin here. 
So it's what, what I'm going to do is this kind of things. I'm going here and check on my scope. As you can see, it's just a bit yellowish here. So we can basically improve this. Uh, we will try to, to, to qualifying a bit here. I'm going quite fast. I don't want to spend a lot of time in qualification now. So we're just going something very rough just to give you an idea here, right? So of course we can improve this. A bit of noise here, clean a bit of black and yeah, we can spend more time to, to do this, but I don't want to do this like right now. So what I'm going to do here is put a bit of magenta on the mid-tones, just a touch and see how it works. Ah, much better. Then of course we can, or if you prefer, you can go to log and push a bit. Maybe it's better log. Mid-tones, magenta here. And then a bit of red on the shadows. And a bit of magenta here. Let's see, yeah, on the highlights. Yeah, much, much, much better. Good. So this is my starting point, right? So what I usually do, I create three nodes here. And, um, and I use a plugin, basically. It calls DCTL. Basically, I can load DCTL from color um, from ACES Center and uh, made by those guys which are doing a really good job. You can check the website of course and download uh, the DCTL and other very good stuff and study about it. It's very, very, very good. So basically I'm loading the color balance DCTL here. And what I'm going to do is basically on the first node, I, wor I will work on the shadows, on the mid zones and in the highlights. So first of all, on the shadows, I will going to take out a bit, take out the red basically. So I'm pushing toward the Saiyan. As you can see, it's a big improvement here, big improvement. Then, we move to the midtones. What we can do here, maybe let's try if we push a bit of magenta, we're going out from this green. Yeah, just a touch like this. Yes, I think it's quite nice, much better. And on the highlights, basically we are going to push a bit of yellow. away from blue like here this kind of film look right it's yeah it's work very well very well very good so this is basically is the, my grade so you can compound node here and you can apply around your projects okay so what's going on? What's going on here? Now, what I'm usually do is um, this kind of things. I will apply a mask to give it a bit more depth, like here, and I will do nodes add outside node here. So you have the control of, of both inside and outside the mask. So outside the mask, I usually going with mid tones, just down, just a touch. Oh, sorry, I'm log. So primary is just a touch like here. As you can see to have a bit more focus on the middle. And what's going on in the, um, in this node, what I usually do, oh, sorry. Oh, shit. 
Okay, guys, sorry, but was uh, resolve crashed. So um, let's let's continue from here. So we say that we are going to create this kind of mask and create uh, an outside node so we can control both, right? So on the on the outside, we are going to put down a bit the gamma. So we have this kind of contrast and focus more on the middle part of the video, of the, of the screens. And what I usually do, as I told you before, was actually applying a frequency separation. It's a plugin from Bell Avenger. You can find it in Asus Central. And I'm not going to explain this, but I am usually do it's lab. I will display the frequency, of course, like in Photoshop. So here, I will show you what's going on. Basically, as you can see here, you can apply sharpening just on the highlight, on the high frequencies, right? So the result is off, on. It's just a touch. I don't want to go crazy, but if you want, guys, you can go a bit more crazy here. So you can see in the hair, Look at this area here, off, on, off, on. It's quite nice, I think. And uh, at the end, I like very, very much the thin grain of uh, Resolve. So I use always this kind of thin grain. I will uh, 35 mil easy a bit of opacity here let's see off on yeah good work yeah very nice as you can see and basically it's done basically is done right so let's let's recap here we have our color expression, contrast, the skin, the grade, and just a bit of final touch with mask and, and gray, basically. So that's it. That's it. And of course, you can apply grades and through your timeline and whatever you want. So basically, and here we have another clip, which is quite different. Um, because it's come from Panasonic and the um, DaVinci Resolve and Panasonic doesn't have an IDT for the, the um, GH5 or S1, the mirrorless, just only for Barricam. So you can see here when you go into the settings and you want to basically apply a transform Panasonic where is that? Let me see. Blah 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 blah. blah. Oh, maybe here. No. P P P P. Panasonic uh, P thirty five. So this is the only the only input available. So I'm I'm not using anything. I just leave empty as I told you before. And uh, here I usually use the same process for this camera. So I have my three nodes. Let's two nodes. In the first one, as I told you, we have neon suppression. In the second one, we are working on the contrast curve. So just do something here. Okay, very, very rough, just to show you guys. Then you can improve and do whatever you want here, basically. Nice, and then it's a bit of temperature. Yeah, and tint, just a touch. Basically, we are ready to go here. It's already quite nice shot, right? With just a few clicks. And then we can do it great. So we have three nodes here, as I showed you before. We have the DCTL plugin here. On the first node, we are going to use, um, we are going to tweak the shadows. So we load the color balance, we 
try to take out some some red from the shadows yeah just like that then we have the midtones here we try to actually the green are quite good already on the midtones so I'm, I think I just push a bit of yellow to enhance you see this kind of yellow curtains and walls around just a touch same thing with highlights so probably we'll push some yellow here yeah very good this this is ready ready to go i think no yeah very very nice image very very filmic i believe um good so what we can do maybe if you like we can just push a bit of saturation color boost here just a touch not so crazy and um, we can apply the mask as before so we have our circle you know, I'm going to open here the power window we have our circle here okay I think we have two here now yeah and um, I will add an outside node as always so you can control both here so we can just push down a bit not so crazy yeah just a touch here as you can see mm. okay and then I will apply as before our frequency separation lab high frequency I'm going to show what's going on here but just a touch yep good and then of course at the end we can just copy paste the grade that we have here oh sorry oh sorry I usually use Mac now today I'm on Windows so I'm just sometimes crazy with with the keyboard but yeah can apply the grain and we are ready to go let's wait for the rendering here boom a really nice shot what we can do here actually it was some kind of yeah just a bit of moire but nothing crazy we can probably fix this but yeah it's another story actually we are going to remove the um, the, f the, the, the the sharpening here we're not to, to use it here because the moire effect is it's uh, it's going more visible with the sharpness so actually i will go to here and i will reduce a bit the sharpness just a touch yeah much better okay that's it thank you very much guys hope you enjoyed the video and uh, waiting for your comments to improve or if you saw some errors or something that i can uh, do better thank you guys ciao